problem 10.2-2. Determine the greatest load F the frame will support without causing the A36 steel member BC to buckle. Assume that the supports at B and C act as pins for buckling about the Z axis and fixed supports for buckling about the Y axis. Here is the frame and here is the load F that we are trying to find. The maximum load F will be dependent on the force uh, at which member BC will buckle. Here is the cross section of member BC taken at AA. Let's do this problem. So in solving this problem we're going to look at buckling about the Z axis which the member is pin pinned and buckling about the Y axis which we're told is uh, the member is going to behave as fixed fixed. So first let's consider buckling about the Z axis. Since we're looking at buckling about the Z axis we need to get our moment of inertia of the cross section about the Z axis. Our base dimension will be the dimension parallel to the neutral axis, the z-axis, which is 15 millimeters, and our height dimension will be 25 millimeters, and it gives us the moment of inertia shown. So we were told for bending about the z-axis, the member will behave as a pinned, pinned member, and that means our k value is going to be equal to 1.0. We were told in the problem that the member is made of A36 steel, so that gives us a modulus of elasticity of 200 times 10 to the ninth Pascals. The length of member BC is just uh, the square root of the uh, sum of the squares. It comes out to be one meter. And now solving for our critical buckling load using Euler's equation and inputting all of the variables from above, we get a value for our our load in the member BC that will cause buckling about the z-axis. Now that's not necessarily our answer, though. We need to now check buckling about the y-axis. So when we buckle the member about the y-axis, our moment of inertia will change. And looking at our cross-section, buckling about the y-axis, are the base, when calculating the moment of inertia, the base will now be the 25 millimeters, the height is 15 millimeters, and that gives us uh, our moment of inertia value shown. It's smaller than the moment of inertia value for about the z-axis, so this is our weak axis moment of inertia. So for buckling about the y-axis, our k-value, our effective length factor, is going to be 0 0.5 because we were told in the problem that about the y-axis, the member is fixed fixed. And the associated k-value is 0.5. So substituting in this information into our critical buckling load equation, we get that a buckling load of 55,517 newtons is necessary to buckle the member about the y-axis. So it looks like buckling about the z-axis controls. So now we know what the load is that we can put on member BC. It's 38.6 uh, kilonewtons. And now we need to relate the load in member BC to this force here at the end. And the way we're going to do that is by summing the moments about point A and then calculating the force F. Now drawing a free body diagram of the member with our load in member BC shown as 38.55 kilonewtons, we can sum the moments at A and solve for F, which is 11.57 kilonewtons, and we're done.